Um, all right. Sweet. Uh, so... Is there another one that we want to try? Run off with Othello. Could do the one. I think this is the one where uh, Ophelia seduces um, Claudius. Is number two on this list. Is what this this player uh, considers the second best ending. Kyla, you recommend running away with Othello? Okay, we can do that. Ophelia, you mustn't. I know. Um, yeah, I don't care about Hamlet. Um, hello. What's a what's a friendly thing? Uh I guess I heard you speaking of your adventures. Can you tell me more? That's a good one. Um, I heard you speaking of your adventures. Can you tell me oh, more? Cool. Uh, certainly, although I must admit the bulk of my tales are to an audience. I'll have to charge you a very steep price. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about your company and private conversation. Okay. Remember all of this. Come to me at midnight when the bar closes. We'll speak further then. Okay, great. Midnight's a long time away, so let's go talk to Bernardo. This is permanence for passion. Barkeep is in trouble. Captain. My apologies. Uh, hmm. Uh, uh, Ophelia. Right. Yes. I We've will. seen all of this dialogue before. Um. I think that's enough, although I might as well go find Marcellus and tell him to. Uh, hi, you're like a shadow. Um, barkeep in trouble. Marcellus. Othello uh, has been beset by thugs. What? Innocent people in Castletown are being threatened and have no recourse. Marcellus? I'm begging you to get involved in this one. He needs help. Fine. Stop looking at me with those big green eyes. You're just like your damn mother. Alright. Sweet. Uh, now I think we go to the bar.
I really like the sound mixing Hello. on the clock tick when you fast forward. That's really good. So you came after all. It's strange. I've never been out this late on my own before. I don't know what compelled me. Yes, I seem to have that effect on people. You promised me a story and I've come to collect. Then have a seat and a mug of wine and I'll tell you all my secrets. My lady? Tell me, my lady, have you ever been to Athens? <laughs> Athens, I've hardly been here. What a pity. I was there once, ashore to make a trade with my crew. In the middle of the night, I awoke to hear the most beautiful singing I'd ever heard in my life. It was a woman's voice calling to me through the darkness, and I felt so strange, as though I must certainly find that voice. So I stumbled out of my quarters into the deep, dark forest beyond the city's lanterns, and there I became truly and deeply lost. After what seemed like hours, I burst into a wooded glen and saw her, the Queen of the Fairies. She wore nothing, and her hair was down to her knees woven with flowers. Even so, I sensed that she was strong. When she glanced at me, I knew she was deciding whether to greet me or consume me, as though she were a massive spider. Please. Oh, come now. Surely you aren't saying fairies are real. <laughs> I make no claims, my lady, beyond what I saw that night. Titania pulled me into her arms, and everything went strange after that. I thought she kept me there for years, wandering her woods, listening to her singing, lying on beds of flowers. She told me she loved me and demanded I love her in return. I told her I could not, and she promised never to let me leave until I was hers. Wait. <laughs> Did you and she lie together intimately so, i think so it's hard to remember but i think so when you're pulled into the embrace of a being like that nothing makes sense still i always knew i didn't love her sometimes she brought other mortal men and women to her fold they professed their love to her immediately and she consumed their hearts in some sick way i wanted her to consume my heart too i wanted to give in but i couldn't something wouldn't let me Ugh. One night, Titania grew furious. She raged at me, threw me against a tree with the force of her magic. She buried me under the earth so I couldn't breathe, tore my limbs apart, and grew them anew. She demanded I give in. Still, I refused, with the last of the strength I had. And when dawn came, Titania spot spat me out of her web, leaving me alone in the woods. When I found my way back to my men, they hadn't even realized I was gone. All those years I'd spent with Titania amounted to but one night in the mortal world. Doesn't that seem impossible that time would pass in such a strange way? Somehow I don't find that impossible at all. Tell me, do you think you've ever been in love, my lady? I was once. What was it like? You mean you've never been in love? I cannot say I have. Loving women and having been in love are rather different matters to me. Well, then it's wonderful. It's painful too. You spend all your time thinking about the other person, what they're feeling, whether they're happy. Their pain becomes your own. When they suffer, so do you. Even when you aren't in love anymore, that link still remains. I know he's suffering, even now. And when you lay with him, what was it like? Was he sweet to you? Or was he cruel with you, as some men are? That, hmm, uh, <laughs> Of course, I forget you're a lady of the court. Please, forgive me. I never told anyone about it. That's all. I'm terribly sorry. Have I embarrassed you? If so, please accept my gravest apologies. It's not that. Are you still in love with him, then? Oh, Ophelia. I don't know. I've known him all my life. We were children together. He's not just a person. He's home. You can't easily stop loving someone when they're all you've ever known. And I've explored what a future with him might look like, too. Explored, you say? In what manner? You wouldn't understand. It would only sound peculiar. Oh. 
Well, I can offer you something a little less peculiar, I think. Ooh, ooh, let's kiss Othello. Hi, Shiro, yeah, good girl. Oh gosh, that was not lined up properly. <laughs> Ah, uh, look, dawn approaches. It felt as though it was but a moment. Seems you have some magic powers of your own. You know, I'd like to see you again tomorrow night. That is, if you aren't dissuaded by my boldness. Perhaps it ev could even be my turn to hear you tell a story of your own. I'll be waiting. Sweet dreams. I'm grateful for the time we've spent together. I hope to see you in my bar soon. Now then. Please be safe on the road back to the castle. The men who threaten my establishment surely find their courage when the sun is down. Um, Ophelia has feelings for Othello. Othello wants to speak with me alone. Hi, Polonius. Othello wanted to speak with me alone? Ah, Othello wants to speak with me alone again. When is that? Friday night at midnight. Yeah. <laughs> My mysterious paramour, we meet again. You mentioned rumors about me earlier. What did you mean by that? Oh, I don't know that they're appropriate. I misspoke. My apologies. I'm old enough not to be shielded from what others think. <clears throat> well, the few have been within the castle walls claim you're the loveliest woman in Claudius's court. And I must say, I'm inclined to agree. There are also rumors of a less savory nature about your mother's origins and her marriage to your yes. father. My mother was a servant. That's not a rumor. That's the truth. Is it true, then, that her mother, your grandmother, was a slave? I don't know. My father won't speak of where she came from, and I've been told never to speak of it either. You have the look of a proud Ethiopian about you. Were it not for your green eyes, I think you could be related to Empress Alini herself. Surely you aren't saying there's more than one Empress. Of course. Of course! Surely you don't think Denmark is the whole of the world. The Romans don't own everything. Haven't you been elsewhere? No, until now I'd never left Elsinore except to summer in Copenhagen as a girl. And even then I rode in a carriage, a small walled box leading to a larger walled box. God above, I'd no idea. How then do you live in the castle? Are you not lonely? No, of course not. I've got my father and my brother, Laertes. And your friends? Uh, well, there's Lady Brit, you know. I'm afraid I don't have many of those. I grew up playing with my brother, the guard Captain Bernardo, and the prince. Most people in the court were unkind to my brother and me. We looked odd, and they made sure that we knew it. I knew there were worse rumors about me floating around. So I've never known anyone my own age, not really. I much prefer the company of books. If a book hurts or disappoints me, I can simply close it. What's it like living here in Castletown? I've only lived here two years. No, Ophelia, I am Somali and was sold into slavery as a child. I lived a slave for nearly 15 years. I can scarcely remember the village I grew up in, but it was many distant worlds away from anything else I see around me now. When I was captured, I know not where my parents went. I never saw either of them again. I recall our captors put us in the dark hold of a ship, 
hundreds of us chained so close together that we could scarcely move an inch. This, for weeks, in sweltering heat and through rolling waves a hundred feet high, we cried and prayed in our moving coffin. The woman next to me screamed for the first week, then died the next. I know not of what. Her corpse began to stink and swell and rot beside me. Ophelia. Ophelia, if there is a hell, it is in the hold of that ship. I was given over to my master's house in Constantinople, sold at market with all the other young men. I was made to convert to Islam, though as a child I had scarcely had time to know my village's pagan gods. And I learned to fight. I kept my master's gates and watched over his family as they slept. When I grew older, I saw my opportunity to bring my master great glory as a recruit in the Sultan's army of slaves. My master permitted me to leave his household and serve him there. As I trained and fought for the Sultan, I watched the Ottomans expand their empire ever westward and roll through the white-faced men like lightning. I saw the magnificence of the world unfold bes before me, and I learned there was an elsewhere. There were other places to be seen. When the opportunity came, I slipped my bonds of war and fled on foot to the west, where I have meandered ever since. I don't know what to say. I'm so sorry. I cannot even imagine. All I've ever known is, well, comfort. This. You've endured so much. I could never have survived that. Yes. Don't say that. The world is full of cruelty and ugliness and gold for the taking, Ophelia. You and I alike both understand how cruel some can be. But you're correct that likewise I find your upbringing so strange, I don't know that I can imagine it. In the same way, it is hard for you to know the inside of that darkened ship. Hmm. Well, come see me then. Come see the castle. What? <laughs> Why don't I show you the way I live? After all, I've seen your inn and heard your stories. I don't know that I'd be welcome at the palace. Not among lily-faced, blue-blooded Danes. Then don't come to the palace. Let me show you the gardens, the grounds, the places I love to roam and read. You'll be safe if you accompany me, I promise it. It's the least I can do. If that is what you wish, then so be it. This castle. I can hardly understand what I'm seeing. The gate I passed through, it was enormous. And the greenery so maintained, and these trees foreign and full-bloomed. Ophelia, how do you live here and not walk about with your mouth agape? <laughs> it's all familiar to me. To me, this seems as plain and ordinary as anything else in my life. Anything becomes far less compelling when one sees it each morning. <laughs> That pond. Look at it. It's the perfect size for swimming. And I'd expect it's just the right temperature for a summer night. Ah, excellent. Care for a swim, my dear. I... I can't swim. I don't even think I can float. Don't be afraid. Fortunately for you, I can do both. Come and take my hand. Easy now. You can lean on me. I'll make sure you don't go under. <laughs> God. My skirts are getting soaked. They're heavy like this. I suppose you'll simply have to take them off then. There's no one around to see, after all. Enter a sexual relationship with Othello. Sure, let's do it. Here, help me. That was quite a sigh. Help me with my dress. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What is this? What in God's name? Ophelia, is that you I see? Your Majesty. Who in the hell is that? What is Claudius Stop. doing out here? Step away from Lady Ophelia at once. The king... My lord? Uh, my lord, your highness, it's all right. I'm safe. This is a friend of mine. 
My king, I am Othello of I don't give a damn who you are. Leave. No. My lord. With all due respect, my lord, I've done nothing wrong. The lady invited me here of her own free will. We were merely having a swim. He's a friend and a guest of mine. There's no reason to treat him with anything but respect. A friend? Is that what you call this? My nephew was right. You're nothing but a low-born whore. <clears throat> oh, God. What did you say to her? I, I say whatever I like. I'm the king of this country, and I own your life within my hand. Would Will you raise a hand against me, mongrel? Then I could gouge you on the spot. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. I could mount your head on my wall like an old black ram. Jesus Christ. Leave, please. I'll handle this. Go now. Go now. Do as she says. Goodbye. Goodbye, Lady Ophelia. Girl. As for you, I hope you feel appropriately and utterly shamed. Dry yourself off. Pick yourself up. You've clearly been allowed to cavort freely for too long. Idleness breeds sin. You know, Claudius, you've wanted me to suffer ever since I was a girl and I never knew why. It took meeting Othello to realize that. You've always wanted Laertes and me isolated. Hated. I'm not good enough for Hamlet, but I'm not good enough for anyone else, either, am I? That's insane. You're merely angry I disrupted this encounter and spitting fire at me appropriately. You're fortunate I won't tell others of this incident. Do as you like. Tell everyone if you must. All of my life, men have been telling me to stay indoors, speak more softly, read less, as though I were a statue. Well, I'm not, and I won't be told what to do anymore, not by you or anyone. If I'm not permitted to choose for myself, I'll forge that permission by my own hand. Damn, yeah, get it, Ophelia. What just happened? Othello must have returned to the bar. I ought to find him and apologize. Um, okay. Let's do that. You came back. Yes. I'm sorry about everything. Come here. Never. Don't apologize. Never once, from now until death, understand? You must never apologize for the intolerance inflicted by others. But you know that this, our relationship, there are reasons why it cannot be. How can you be so certain? You have your place. The castle is your home. Unless, that is, you were to come with me. I'm leaving town. With no way to pay back my debt on the tavern, my days here are numbered. Where will you go from here? Mm. South? South to Italy, I think? South to where the summer nights last forever and there are no snows? Yes, I can see a bright beach in my mind's eye and a small but sturdy room to call my own. But you could come with me, but you could never return. They'd have me killed. You and I both know that. But if you were to come with me, Ophelia, I'd make you my wife. I'd love you with a ferocity to rival the stars. And you'd be free to live however you pleased. Hello. That sounds wonderful. But I can't. What? What's stopping you? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. All that I ask is that you think about my offer. Whether you accept or reject me is your choice alone. If you'd like to escape with me, then you need only say the word, and we'll leave this whole sorry mess behind together. And if not, then I'll take my leave of you. I swear it. I shall never cross your path or trouble your mind with uneasy thoughts again. Whoa! Fucking hell, Quince. Quince? How did you come here? Does it matter? Hmm. 
I see all stories, and I know that down this path lies unhappiness. Poor girl, even now you're at the mercy of forces larger than yourself. I'll give you that the young man is one thing. I'll give you, I'll give that young man one thing. He's true to his word. <clears throat> He'd love you more brightly than the stars. For a while, that is. But he is fated to love another more powerfully than you, and someday he'll win her over with songs and stories. I... How can you be so sure of that? I see the lines of fate that run through all worlds. Her name is Desdemona. How peculiar that even her name means ill-fated. She will be far unluckier than you. You will lose a love when Othello leaves you, but she will lose her life to him. You mean he murders her? Such tragedy. Indeed, a terrible thing. I dare say it shall tear him apart. But rest easy that the next few years will be blissfully happy ones. This is, perhaps, the happiest of all possible worlds for you, and in that time, he will always be faithful. Hmm. Can you settle for a brief but brilliant bliss, always watching for the pale woman with the quiet eyes who will eventually, assuredly, win his heart? Oh, I do love little puzzles like this. Stop this! <laughs> There are a lot of jilted lovers out there who would pay dearly for this sort of clairvoyance. So what do you say? Uh, yes, that's the ending we're going for. Yes. I want to come with you. I hadn't known how terrified I was until right this moment. My love, my love, we're going to see the world together. I'd like that, to see the world, I mean, with you. Now then. Let us depart immediately. I'll gather my things and you gather yours. This shall be the dawning of my life, and you shall be the sun. Come, my love. Let down your hair and abandon your heavy skirts. <laughs> it's a beautiful summer, and we are the masters of our own joy. Sacrifice permanence for passion. I wonder what even happens to everybody else. Uh, what? Um, okay, so what do we have? We have Hamlet. We have... Uh, leave Elsinore. We have rule beside Hamlet. Uh, and the family gets exiled. Uh, go crazy. Go with Othello. Which actually feels pretty good, frankly. Sacrifice everyone for myself. This seemed the most variable. There were lots of different like variations of this, and none of them were great. Uh, sacrifice independence for peace. Um, which I don't know who survives this. Because I think in one version of this, a bunch of people died. And in one version, fewer people died. That kind of makes a difference to me. Um, or I could destroy the book. Or I could burn the book. Um, what do folks think? Anybody have a an opinion? 
I like the Othello one. I... <laughs> It seems like the best endings, this sort of makes sense, the best endings are, um, the ones where you leave Elsinore. Elsinore is a, a cursed place doomed to tragedy. Uh, and I, I feel some resistance to that because I like kind of want to solve this, right? Like, even though I know there's not a perfect solution, I want the situation in general to turn out well. Uh, or as, as well as possible. Um, it feels a little weird to sort of say, well, I'm just gonna skip out. But it also feels you know, there's a rightness to that. That, like, uh, this is a bad situation. And... Uh, it has been set up against Ophelia specifically. Elsinore is a hole. Okay. I, yeah, I hear you. Um, I just don't know that I can go through all of the endings, Kyla, even sort of knowing what they are. Like, um, you know, I... The, uh, some of them I think are quick, but a couple of them I think would take quite a while to do. Um, and I want to, yeah, I, yeah, I think let's do, um, let's do this. Let's sacrifice prestige for family, uh, and leave Elsinore behind forever. There, the, um... I think I know what you're talking about. I would love for you to describe it, because uh, I might want to watch like a playthrough of it or something. Uh, the exunt ending, I've sort of heard, is a secret ending. Um, let's do this. Let's sacrifice prestige for family. I think that was a good middle ground, right? It's not... Ophelia abandons everyone that she's ever known and runs away with a total stranger for a few years of happiness and then who knows what. Uh, this is Ophelia takes her family, the ones that she's closest to, the ones that she really cares about, and uh, takes them out of Elsinore and all the bad things that it brings. And lives in peace, hopefully, if not prosperity. Let's see what this looks like. Huh. Yes. I'm ready. All right, here we go. She's here, she's please. here. Places everyone, please. It's time for the final curtain call. If you'll allow me, I shall set the scene. When we last left Ophelia, she was ready to use the Book of Fates to choose exile for her family from Elsinore forever. What say you about this, friends? Hmm. Certainly it's no trouble to me. I've longed for nothing more than to leave the castle behind. But if we leave court, father must relinquish his advisory role to the throne. That role means everything to him. It did once, but these last few days have given me a natural pause. After all, in other worlds, Hamlet kills me, and no one grieves my loss. If that's the measure of my use to the king and queen, then what must I do to make them rethink their feelings towards me? You gave me no reason to trust you, Polonius, fucking Claudius. You were never secretive about your undying faith to my brother, always hiding things from me, going behind my back to stir up trouble. Because I swore an oath to him in life, to you, my lord. My king. I will always honor your memory, my king. But it is time for my children and me to move on. Thanks. I could never hold such a thing against you, Polonius. After all, you let even your own lands and estates go fallow in your mission to uphold the throne. It's true, our family has nothing for all our titles. We are quite penniless, I'm afraid. Had I been more actively managing our estates, we might have found more success. But years of idleness on that front 
all in the interest of better dedicating myself to his majesty, have run our coffers dry. Then where shall we live, father? In the last remaining estate we have, a small and forgotten place. It is far from the luxury of Elsinore Castle. That's unfortunate to hear, but it is clear we cannot stay here. If this is the world Ophelia chooses, then we must go to that forgotten place and see if we can't turn our fortunes around. I find the notion unlikely. I fear this may be the very last of our noble house. That, that's what this world would mean. Oops. Then, sister, I hope you make the right choice. Thank you, everyone. I think I know what I ought to know now. Let's do it. This will be inscribed as the true fate of Elsinore Castle, ending you from your uh, endless loop. There will be no turning back. This is the fate I choose. Gone from Elsinore, my father's worst fear. The gates closed behind us forever as we gathered into our singular carriage. All our worldly possessions strapped to the top. We traveled for two days until we reached the outer limits of Denmark's borders. A small castle of no repute, crumbling away into snow and dirt. This is the land my father was given to carry out the rest of our quiet lives. We have no servants, no animals, only these broken stone walls and us. At first, father uses his connections to borrow a little money where he can, but he knows we cannot pay them back, and in time, that coin dries up. We learn to do honest work. Laertes chops the wood that feeds the fire. I gather what roots and food I can find from the forest to feed us and learn to set traps. For a while, it is a good, warm life, but what little it's worth. Every night, Laertes strums his lute as father and I drift off to sleep by the fire. I grow close to Laertes. I get to know father in a way I never did. He talks about mother more. He talks about the love they felt for one another, and the love he feels for us. Father clasps his hands in mine and swears to me that someday soon he's going to get us out of here. Somewhere better. He says it with tears in the corner of his eyes, and I can tell he means it. But one morning, after a particularly cold December night, Father wakes with a cough. It does not improve. Soon he lies in bed, unable to stand without shaking so hard he looks like he might collapse altogether. Laertes and I bring him all that we can. Every medication, every ointment. We sell a few of my dresses to bring the local physician to have a look at Father. For the first time in my life, I pray. I don't know who's listening, so I pray to Mother Mary. I beg her to keep Father alive, offer her anything she likes, anything but his life. And it seems like someone is listening to my prayers. Father's health improves slowly. He begins to sit up a little. He begins to eat. We even take him outside when spring comes. He begins to talk of us leaving this place and going somewhere better. South to Bohemia, perhaps, or even further afield. But one morning, when I go to rouse him, it is cold. The body is stiff, eyes sunken. Skin stretched too taut over the bones. I, I have to look away. Laertes holds me tight. We bury him in a little patch of green moss close to the castle's walls. I try not to resent our exile as I look to the south towards Elsinore's walls, and I fail. After father's death, it is hard to imagine ever being happy again. Years pass. And Laertes and I frequently go months speaking to no one but each other. We are surprised to find we do not miss the company. Both of us marry, eventually. Laertes meets a small woman with a gentle smile and a quiet nature, a shepherd's daughter. She makes a pleasant counterpoint to his stormy attitude. And I am married to a dark-haired man with a gift for poetry, a baron's son. Luckily, this one is far more kind than Hamlet ever was. Laertes offers him everything we have as a dowry. Our spouses come to live in the crumbling castle, and slowly we begin to fix it up. There are new doors and windows now. 
With all of Father's connections a mystery to us, this is our home, now and forever. A few chickens, cows, and pigs make do in the front yard, and soon they are joined by children who like to chase them around. This is not a noble life. This is not the life I would have chosen for myself, and it isn't the life Father would have wanted us to lead. But in the end, we are, if not happy, something very much like happiness. Farewell, Elsinore. Hmm. Interesting. Um, as an ending, I feel like it was bitter in a different way than I expected. Uh, more about sort of how hard it was to lose nobility than the sort of specifics of Elsinore, uh, which I thought would have been sort of more interesting, but maybe harder to write because again, we did that ending based on a walkthrough in the sort of like most simplistic way. Um, there's probably, you could do those things that led to that ending and also do a bunch of other stuff that like screwed with different people. So in the ending, you can't really reference the specific fates of specific people, uh, who might have ended up sort of differently based on however the player played. Are these Kickstarter backers? I'm not surprised that it was a sad ending. I think all of the endings are sad, and I think they're very deliberately sad, right? Like, I think that the, the, the narrative at the end of the game is going to emphasize the sacrifice that it asks you to make. Unless they're horrible. Right. Yes, Kyla. Exactly. Uh, I think they could be worse. Um, I see folks that I recognize. Um, after the credits roll, let's do some Q&A. So if folks have questions uh post them in the chat and kyla i would i would love to uh hear your description your retelling of the um the secret ending Hey, there's me. Partly feeling half lost like the walls last for days. Never doors, windows black. You don't fall on your back. Gather sheets, gather swords. <laughs> yeah, the two. I'm interested in the two non book endings. That's very good. Oh, there we go. 